Hi, this is Paul Neal from Pen Productions, and uh, today I'm going to take a look at uh, building a custom spline IK system. Don't know that I've, I've, I've done this tutorial before, so uh, I've been asked for it. So what we have is a, you know, a, a custom version of the spline IK solver. You could think of it way more complicated to set up, but you can create way more control of how it uh, currently works. You know, in this case, I'm sort of doing one that would replicate... Um, uh, you know, a, a typical uh, character, you know, bipedal character as a spine. I've just used five bones just to keep it simple and, uh, you know, not overcomplicated. Really often character rigs, I, I don't need any more than five anyways. Um, it has the ability to be able to obviously move uh, and stretch the, uh, the, the spine um, as well as rotate the spine from the top and the bottom so that it uh, twists nicely. One of the nice things about this as well is that uh, it doesn't um, you know, snap suddenly at 180 degrees. You'll notice it's actually wrapping all the way around, and I can keep going basically. At some point, it starts to pop. You can see the second bone up starts to rotate backwards um, You know, as it, uh, as it starts to kind of look at the object as it passes through itself. Essentially, this is getting a lot closer than... Um, uh, than, than normal uh, to, to any kind of thing. You've also got a center control that allows you some offset twist as well as, you know, offset movement as well. And it always stays in between the other two. If you're wondering what's popping up on the left here, this is track editor running inside of one of my custom uh, rigging utilities. This is not available. However, track editor is, and it's on my website and you can uh, download that and it's free. Uh, it can help a lot in rigging processes and animation processes and everything in between um, when it comes to dealing with tracks and controllers. Okay, so let's get started on this and start building this out and try and gain and understand lots of steps to it. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you're gonna have to follow along step by step to be able to get all the points that I uh, that I discuss as to why I do things the way I do things. Okay. So in getting started, I am in the left viewport. I am not in the front viewport or the top viewport or any others. It should be the left viewport, L on your keyboard, or hit V and choose the uh, one you want. Or of course, you can go up to here as well if you want to uh, reach for things. I'm gonna start by creating a line. Uh, I tend to set it to smooth and smooth just to get started. My character is about yay tall, 180 you know, centimeters tall or whatever. Uh, so maybe it's in here somewhere. I don't have a character in the scene. So, um, but I like making even my tutorials to scale because you can have issues arise if you don't build things to scale. So I've built five, a, a, spline with five verts in this case um five knots uh, i guess and this would represent the tailbone down here you know uh, the waist is going to be in here somewhere and up the you know middle of the back uh, in between the shoulder blades and the base of the neck so then we could carry if we wanted something else up into the neck it could be another spline ik uh you know, a custom spline IK solution. It could just be FK going up. It depends on how you want to do it and the complexities that you want to generate for yourself. But I don't usually make my um, spline systems um, go from the tailbone up to the top of the head. It's just a little harder to be able to control when you animate. You need to be able to isolate parts of the character when you animate. So for this, uh, we're starting right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this spline and we're going to copy it out. Now, let's just do some naming as we go. I'm going to use this um, namer, which isn't the best. Uh, I have one that's uh, far better. But uh, if we leave this up on the screen, uh, it works OK. We're going to call this guy Bob. I don't know. You know you pick something. And we're going to stick my... I always stick an identifier of the type of object it is uh, and then what it is, uh, you know, what part it is. Uh, uh, oops. Uh, spine. And I'm going to set numbering system uh, to be starting at one. And then I'm just going to copy this out. 
so it's out behind it. So essentially that is behind the character at this point, so that's out um, behind. I'm gonna leave this up on the other screen uh, just in case I need it. If you close the max one, you have to fill it all back in again. I have one that retains information and also auto checks what kind of information uh, it is. Now, something else you probably wanna do when you copy this out is not actually copy it, but make an instance. We may as well just keep them identical at this point so that we can adjust this. Now, I'm also going to go in and set these now. I set them all to smooth to start with. I'm gonna set them all to Bezier and I'm gonna make sure it's nice and smooth and fluid. If you notice the center one almost never works quite the way you want. So I'm going to grab that and just clean that up a little bit. And I'm gonna, they don't have to be the same. I mean, this one could be dead straight for instance. It really wouldn't matter too much, but I find it a little easier to kind of wrap your head around if you keep them all the same. So we'll leave those right now just so you can start to understand where we're going. Probably going to rebuild this one as we go. Um, so this one here is going to be for the actual spine. This one is going to be for sort of an up vector control that's going to control the up vectors of the, of the object. So what we want to do is, is we want to, be, to have um, uh, this uh, uh, spine uh, able to be controlled. And the way we're going to do that is with the, um, uh, what's it called again, uh, spline IK control modifier. We are not using the spline IK solver, just the control modifier, because it allows us to be able to go create helpers, turn on no linking. Let's take the size way down there, we'll just make them small, okay? And we'll leave them displayed as boxes. So these are gonna be our controls for the spline. So if you pick any one of these now, it pulls it around. What's interesting is it's actually pulling this one around because it's an instance. However, this won't work quite the way we want. Um, uh, and we may have to, we're gonna to have to change it anyways, because we need controls on here. So realistically, we're going to have to uninstance this. Um, and uh, what you're gonna find is, is that it does that <laughs> when you do it. So it, it really messes things up. So let's just go in ahead and uh, see, this is number two now, which is strange. This is supposed to be number one. So we can't just go and do that. Easiest way to do it is copy it out and make it an actual copy. Uh, I just wanted, oh, yeah, now it's gonna, the spline IK control is going to uh, mess with things. Uh, so we're just gonna get rid of that for the moment. Let's go ahead and do it again. So you'll see with the, you know, issues that kind of pop up. You gotta be careful of this. Let's make it a copy. And so I'm gonna go in and put the, just hit X, spline IK. If I spell it right, it'll come up. Um, spline IK, control and create. And we'll just make these a value of maybe two. No, let's try five. That looks pretty good. And let's do the same thing over here. And we'll just go say create and we'll say a value of five again. So we've got them over uh, behind. So these two now, I'm actually gonna make this uh, number one and I wanna make this number two so I remember. Now we need uh, you know, some control objects to start understanding how we're gonna control this. Um, you know, just, just to start sort of thinking about it. And one that I always do is I make sure that I have one on the ground to start with. Now I'm gonna make it my life easy. I'm gonna use my pen, pen control objects. They're on my website as, uh, as well. And uh, uh, I'm going to use coin. We're gonna call this guy Bob. Just hit snap. I don't know if it'll come on properly there. There we go. So there's Bob. That's on my website, so you can go and get that. So the next one I'm going to create then is a circle. Okay, and same thing. I want that created uh, at the center of uh, world space, let's say. But just in case it isn't, look at it's just off that touch. My uh, snap isn't quite handled. So I'm going to make sure this one is dead center too, just by zeroing out these values. This one is going to become our um, waste. So back to the left viewport, and I'm going to put that up around where the waist of the character is going to be. Now, obviously, if you had a character in the scene, you'd be able to see where that is better, I'm guessing in this case. Okay, I'm just kind of making it up at this point. Our local coordinate system is lined up to the uh, the, the world uh, coordinate system. So I just looked at um, 
the local and that is alt right click and into or up here uh, wherever you want i prefer my quad menus over having to reach constantly for things now we're also going to need a couple more and we'll put those in in a sec that's just to get us sort of started on this um let's now take a look at uh how we're going to control the um uh, you know the bones up the spine and so what we need for this are some point helpers so if we just hit x and uh, type in point um, or you could go find it in here if you want to do a bunch of clicking uh, i'm going to cr uh, create a point and um, let's just change this up i'm going to turn uh, axis tripod on and just bump its size up so i can see it a bit better and i'm going to make this a different color so that I know what I'm looking at. We'll make these red for now, okay? So we can we can see them. Uh, the rotation, by the way, because I made it in the left viewport is, is not rotated um, correctly. So you could go ahead and zero that out if you wanted. It's not all that important. But what we wanna be able to do is have bones stretched up this, uh, this path. And they're gonna be um, uh, looking at and following these point helpers. So these point helpers need to be on path constraints. Now, something else I do for speed reasons um, is I actually uh, put my main menu bar, it's called uh, via the uh, customize, customize user interface, look up main menu bar, clean out your, I've, this is my control right click uh, quad. I clean out this lower right one of the uh, stuff that's in it because it's actually a replication of the con just control right click. Uh, or sorry, right click. Uh, so in a control right click, I drop my main menu bar and flatten it. This way I can actually get to some things quickly and you'll see why. Um, I can go into constraints and we're gonna go constraints, path constraint and put it on the path. Delete the keys, the last and the first key so that you don't have animation on it. We can now copy this up, but if you uh, ever wanna get back to uh, the path constraint, if you're gonna do a bunch of them in a row, right click and hit the top bar, that's just gonna execute the last thing executed. You can see it's highlighted there. So if you hit that top main menu bar, you'll execute that same action again. That's why I put it everything in my quads like that. So we're gonna have five bones. So I'm gonna need um, several of these. Let's just call these uh, something again. Uh, so this is going to be, um, uh, there's point, uh, and uh, we're going to call this uh, spine, uh, yeah, spine's good, point spine, yeah, why not? Um, I'm going to hit rename on that, so it uh, gives us a name on it, and then we're going to copy up five of these. We'll make these instances at this case, um, so we've got them as instances. And we're looking for five bones, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, and this one's going to go right to the top, five. And then when you drag up, this might be uh, the percent along path may not be completely accurate from the dragging, so set it to 100. Uh, I like to be very, very, very precise when I build things in character rigs. So there's a good reason for it. If you don't, you can end up with an absolute nightmare of problems that will arise along the way. Um, and uh, you won't know if what's broken if you can't look at the rig and say, that's not perfect. Also, you can just, you know, you, if you have um, small errors and everything you do, they will just compound as you move forward. So don't have those small errors. So I'm gonna spread these out maybe a little bit better. Me, uh, you know, a tailbone, sort of, you know, the small of the back and uh, going up into the uh, middle of the back and then going up uh, you know above sort of above the shoulders so we're going to do something like that and now we can go ahead and snap some bones in so shift right click grid settings or again you can go up and right click up here if you want to reach and uh, i like to uh, have um, uh, pivot points on or vertices vertices on depending on what I want to uh, snap to so a uh, pivot point uh, is what we're looking for because we want to snap our bones into those um, and there's a good example of the quad menus uh, functioning because I've already picked this I don't need to I can put my uh, mouse over the title and it will pop it open so you can close it just by you know snapping this back and you know uh, onto that uh, thing and letting go and it's it just makes it faster so let's hit x and we're going to call it uh we're going to look for bone ik chain 
and uh, this should be good we're gonna have snap on and I'm gonna snap from there to there to there to there to there and up to the top now I'm gonna pick all of them and unpick the top one, the top little node. You always wanna keep that in there. By the way, we're gonna need it especially in here. Next, we need the bone tools. So under animation, bone tools are again, the top of the screen. And um, uh, I wanna turn on my uh, front fin. I just wanna see which way this is facing. Um, you know, that uh, I wanna know where what's happening to these bones and they're all pointing in the same direction when i'm done and they're not all over the place again that's part of being clean likely is i'm going to turn these things off before i ever start skinning you got to be very careful with the fins when you skin uh, in max because things like mirroring uh, skin although it wouldn't matter here because it's the center but mirroring skin it takes the volume center of the bone so if you have a fin turned on on the right side of the leg and not on the left side it won't mirror because it sees two different volume centers okay so make sure the same both sides but um you know this is what we're currently looking at here um, I'm just going to make those a better color because they look really bright. Maybe, uh, I don't know, that's probably a bit better. And I'm going to turn off those stupid selection boxes because they drive me nuts. But, you know, uh, that's Shift J. Um, you know, I, I know when I've got something selected, you can see it's selected. So those are kind of redundant now from the last number of versions, but still there. So uh, with these, they're, they're all just sort of sitting on here right now and, and not doing anything, uh, you know, useful. Um, meaning that if we uh, move the path, and yeah, just turn my snap off with S, they're obviously not following anything. These need to follow these point helpers uh, that are on the path, these big red ones that are on here. Um, and so we're going to do that with um, two things. We're going to use uh, position constraints and look at constraints. Um, and let's set up our position constraints first. And again, you're going to see why I do the uh, quad menu like this. I'm going to go in and grab a position constraint. And that gets position constraint to there and that one to that. You can see I don't have to dig back through the menu again now. Um, I even make my menu bar because I'm old and gray. Um, a little bigger um, so you can set that up too and now the very top one same thing and it goes to the very top so at this point now if we take a look at what's happening and we move this you can see our bones are moving and but they are not targeting what you'd expect them to target um, it's because they're just moving with it so it's ripping the bone chain apart effectively uh, so we need to make sure they're on look at constraints and looking at the next one now each of those look at constraints is going to require an up vector and that's going to be to this one over here so when this one is rotating and twisting around the spine these bones are going to look at it so we may as well set those up at the exact same time what that will mean is we'll need um, uh, new point helpers on path constraints one for each bone that we're going to um, you know have need to look at so let's set that up so let's uh, create a point again and uh, you know comes up with the same settings as last time uh, I'm just going to go in and make sure that it is rotated um, straight and um, so it just you know rotated world because I built it in the left viewport it's it's built pointing up at you I want to make sure it's aligned to world for now and maybe change it later if I need be right click animation constraints path constraint we'll dump it onto the path we'll delete the keys that are auto generated and now we can consider one of these for each of the uh, bones that we need to work with so one's going to be at the very bottom one's probably going to be here somewhere one's going to be here somewhere you know uh, and we're going to be able to adjust these as to uh, um, make them do what to, to sort of work better for us now i'm going to put this one right to the very top at the top um, let's make sure these are all named so i'm going to pick them in order And I think I closed, I did, I see, I always do it by mistake. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna start using my own. So what I have, and I don't know if it's available. It might, it might be um, rename and select tool here.
And so with the rename and select tool, uh, and it's going to allow me to be able to rename stuff a whole lot cleaner. It actually identifies right, left uh, objects and center objects. So it's going to add even a, a more naming conventions. Uh, it'll retain the, the name of the character. And all I have to do is change the part name and it'll automatically identify what it's supposed to be um, depending on here. So we're going to call this um, bone up node. And I don't need to worry about uh, putting in underscores. It'll do it for me. So if I take a look at the name of one of these now, you can see it's Bob Point Center uh, Bone Up Node 02. Uh, so it's it's that's my naming convention system that I'm using. So I'm going to keep using this because what's nice about this is uh, even if I uh, close it and reopen it. So if I go to maybe the, you know some other tool like my color tools and back to my rename tools, it retains or it should have. Oh, that's interesting. Well, something's broken in 2022. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like it's writing my uh, uh, file correctly. Anyways, I'll have to check that out. So this is the first time I've done anything in 2022, believe it or not. So uh, now with this, um, we're going to set up the uh, look at constraints. And I'm just going to put this in the other screen. So I've got it over here. Um, so this is going to be looking at these uh, targets here. So I'm going to go in and again, animation constraints, look at constraint. It's going to look at, um, whoops, nope. Animation constraints, look at constraint. It's going to look up the chain. Okay. And then we're going to set a uh, set up node and we're going to pick the up node. And we're going to tell it to look at that up node and we're going to tell it to stay realigned to the Y. So we, this is why I put those little fins on. Uh, that way I know they've spun around and whatnot. So we can set this up. The other one I like to turn off that drives me nuts is these blue lines. Um, and that's just view line length absolute. And the view line uh, length is to zero. And I actually have a cleanup script just for getting rid of stuff like that um, and, and removing it. So again, it's going to uh, look up the chain. Uh, we zero those out, we go in and take the up node and we set it. And then we say, look at that on the Y. And we're just gonna have to do that all the way up here. So with that done now, you can see that they're gonna be looking at this. So if I were to take, for instance, one of these controls in the spline, you can see it's now rotating uh, the the bones and it's pulling the bones sideways. So those up nodes, those bright green up nodes are controlling that. Let's just change the color of these to be a color that we can identify maybe a bit better. We'll make it the, uh, the pinky color uh, to coincide with the red ones that are, are up the other here. Okay, so now we have something that's starting to function. And, you know, it's, it's starting to work, but we obviously have no way of controlling any of this. And we need to be able to have control objects that are going to be uh, weighted and, and flexible for us to use. So let's set up those control objects. They're just, I'm just going to start with this one here, this um, circle. And I'm going to drop that in here. I'm just going to say uh, uh, copy and uh, we're going to make this a control in the bottom i want it aligned up to this bottom bone um, and but i want it aligned in rotation and in position and you'll notice what's happened with it it has uh, rotated sideways uh, whoops it is not center to center pivot to pivot thank you and so it's going to be at the bottom now we want it aligned back to that world orientation to to get us started so i'm going to uh, rotate on local with a angle snap on and i'm going to rotate that over sideways and that's going to get me my bone now pointing in the right direction so if we look at it in local in the position you can see z is pointing up y is pointing back and it's similar to our world orientation here. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller just so we can identify that that's sort of the control. I'm going to drop one in the middle and uh, we're just going to make an instance of this. So for now it's an instance and I'm going to align that to this bone. And same thing, I'm going to have to rotate that uh, back straight again so it's uh, pointing up. And let's just make sure, yes it is. And I'm gonna move it maybe up in the middle somewhere. Uh, so it's middle of the spine up in that joint somewhere. And one more, 
and we'll align it to the uh, bone at the top. Uh, same thing. Let's just go and rotate that with angle snap on 90 degrees. And just check it. Uh, with position and make sure we're good. So now we have uh, all of our control objects generated. So at this point, I'm actually going to isolate my control objects and kind of set these up to get them going so you have an understanding. Then we're going to connect in the, uh, the, the spine uh, that we're generating here into our control objects. So under just getting the control objects working, I'm going to pick all of them and even the one at the bottom. And I'm going to isolate with, um, uh, you can uh, do two ways. One, Alt-Q, uh, but I tend to do Control-Alt-Q because it's the toggle, um, but it depends on what you're after. I'm just going to toggle it um, on and off. I tend to go with a Control-Alt-Q. So with this, we've got an order we need to parent things up in. The waist is going to be parented to the main control on the ground. So that's going to be our link button up here. That's going to get linked down. Um, now, each of these is going to need to have um, uh, a root node to them. I like to sort of zero them out with a helper. Uh, if you're a Maya user and ever use Maya, there's a group function in Maya. It is not the same as this. It just puts an invisible node at the uh, aligned and parents that uh, the original node you had picked to that group head sort of thing. We can do the same thing. And there's actually uh, a tool on my website for doing that. It's called mgroup. It's been there for years. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, super simple. We're going to use a point helper in this case. I don't like dummies anymore because they don't have as much control. Group each object. Uh, don't just show them uh, by default at this point and go ahead and, uh, and, and group them all. And you'll notice what it's produced is a little point helper uh, at the center of each object that was picked. And if we pick one of the objects and go page up, it's um, parented to it and it's retained the hierarchy that was generated. So you'll now notice that instead of my circle uh, with page up, it's parented to the point, points parented down to the root node. So we want to be parenting all these together uh, eventually and putting them in. So what we can take right now, let's just for sake of argument, let's go and take um, uh, all three of these. We're going to change this. We're going to parent it down to the waist so that when the waist moves, everything else moves. When we move the root, the entire character is going to move. Okay, and then we're going to be making some changes as we go uh, on that. So there's there's that basic setup. But what we really want to have is we want to have the ability that when we move or rotate this top control, that this center control stays between the top and the bottom. So basically, the, you could think of the base of the neck and the, the uh, tailbone. This one's going to stay in between. So we need a couple more uh, helper objects. And we're going to drop those in and do some aligning with these. So um, I'm going to, again, I'm just going to create a point helper. Oops. X point helper. And I'm going to make that larger. And I'm going to align it to, for instance, this middle one. Uh, start with position and rotation. And I'm going to move this one up a bit. I'm going to make a copy of this down below the uh, the other one. And I am going to put one in the middle as well somewhere. And you're going to see where I'm going with this. OK, just for now. So what's going to happen is these 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 ones here, I'll give them a unique color again. These are going to be sort of my waiting um, for the uh, uh, for this this centerpiece. I'll be able to adjust waiting on here. So the top one is going to be parented up to the top control. Whoops just the top one. OK, bottom one's going to be parented to the bottom control. And then the one in the middle is going to be weighted between these two. And I'll be able to adjust where these are. And that'll affect how this middle one um, sort of reacts to the control of the top. Because if you rotate the uh, top control and it's further away, it's going to pull it more. If it's closer to it, it's going to pull it less. So uh, it'll affect the rotations and whatnot. So we can do that first off with um, the uh, animation constraints position constraint. Uh, I'm going to go from bottom to top um, and constrain it to both so they're 50-50. You could also control the weighting of these if you wanted. But again, you'll notice that I can control sort of where it lies. And that would affect how much it actually gets uh, affected 
depending on where this sits away from that center point. So I move it down and then rotate this, it's going to pull it completely differently. So that's kind of nice. Now, when it comes to the rotation, we could use a rotation constraint. However, the rotation constraint is going to have a pop at 180 degrees and it's going to flip over. And that's going to be a problem for us um, to do that. So really what we need to do is we need to use some pram wires and we need to connect it in with some pram wires. But before we do that, all of these control objects, we'll even take the bottom one at this point, they need to have their transforms frozen. So alt right click freeze transform. So we've got frozen transforms on them. We can even do that with the center one. It already has, um, you know, the, the, the position constraint on it. And the problem is if you, you know, so we've just got freeze rotation, so we can freeze it. So we check the rotation controller. There's, it's not frozen. So I'm just going to go to freeze rotation. Why there's no, you know, simple uh, freeze um, uh, for the uh, uh, position, uh, and it has to be done transform with both. I don't know, but that's the way it's done. And for some reason, it looks like it also names it differently. I have no idea why. So I think it's been like that forever. Once again, uh, I think I've got a pile of controller tools on my website. There's an old uh, utility. Um, I don't even know if it still runs on my system because I never pen rigging utils that has a bunch of options for doing that sort of thing. I have an entire custom system for doing my controller tools. It has even way more than what used to be available. And I don't think this is available on my site. Maybe one day I'll make it available. So um, there it is. It's it's frozen in place. So let's make sure that we can rotate these now and then have that center one rotate as well. So just to make sure I'm seeing what I expect, I'm going to turn on the axis tripods on these so I can see what happens when they uh, when they get rotated. So I'm going to right click and go to my dope sheet just to check my controllers. You can see they're frozen. I've got two here. OK, and we're actually going to add a third in a minute. We're going to um, put a third controller in on this second this one here we also want to go in now and grab the parameter wire dialog for some reason they changed it from alt 5 and now you have to go in and because there's just there isn't one anymore uh, I guess I wasn't in the meeting and so parameter wire dialog I hate going through this right click parameter wire it's slow it's cumbersome and I don't know it just doesn't work very well in my opinion but that's just me so I'm going to open uh, click on the load so it loads that point that I've got it and I'm going to load that over on the right it's going to be driven so it's this keyframe one here um, we're going to start with the uh, top one and so I'm going to load that over on this side whoops this side sorry and that's going to be our top control probably should name it and I'm going to go take that zeroed out controller and we're going to start wiring things together here now as we wire them together I'm also going to multiply it by 0.5 and you're going to see why in a sec there so I'm going to say um, I'm going to copy the 0.5 so I don't have to keep um, uh, doing that and I'm just going to paste that and say connect and connect. So when I rotate this now, you can see that that center one is rotating. And what's nice is because it is on a wire param, it won't suddenly snap at 180 degrees and it's only rotating half as far. So now I want to wire in the other one. Well, how do you wire in the other one when these controllers are already wired in? Well, what we can do is we can go about uh, adding another list in here. So we've got this, um, uh, object selected. It's got the one we wired in, which was this one called keyframe now for some reason with the uh, freeze rotations. Uh, we can go to and we can rename those, by the way, just go to the actual control, the uh, list controller, and you can name them to whatever you want them to be. So maybe we should call this um, top. OK, and um, then when we go down to available, I'm going to right click assign controller, throw in an Euler XYZ double click on it and just say bottom and enter and what I've now I, you know that obviously it makes more sense if you start naming things like this because you'll know what you're looking at uh, you know a year from now when you reopen it and try to figure out what you did so same thing now you can see we've got bottom uh, I'm going to pick the bottom control and I'm going to go in and load it 
And we're going to do the exact same thing with a 0.5 on there. And this is part of uh, the idea that I um, made sure things were kind of lined up. It's going to, you know, be way more obvious to us. So now when I rotate this one, you can see that center one is staying halfway between the others in rotation and it's not popping. Um, again, the rig's going to pop at some point. Um, uh, but you could you could have fixed controls in there and stuff because eventually the that that second spine is going to pass through the first one as it tries to twist around it. It's only got five points on it, so um, yeah, you could get even fancier uh, and try and stop it. There's all kinds of things you can do to stop the the flip from happening. So now we have this kind of balance system going on, and I'm going to accept where these are right now and kind of live with it. And as we see what's happening, so I'm going to go to that center point. Come on. There we go. And this one is going to be parented out to this weighted control here. So I'm going to go to the um, link and link it on. So now that center control is going to stay in between the other two. So it's going to have this nice weighting through it. I can I can close that one out. Just close my uh, dope sheet at the same time now. And control alt Q and let's bring it all back and start uh, hooking some things up. So what needs to get hooked up? Well, we've got uh, the five initial point helpers that control the spine. So these are the ones that actually uh, pull the spine around, uh, the spline around, which is the spine of the character. And so the bottom two are going to get parented to the bottom control. Top two are going to get parented to the top control. The middle one is going to get parented to the middle control. So if we now grab this and I move this around, you can see we're starting to get a spline IK solution happening. Okay, it's not perfect yet. It's not exactly what we want. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Uh, you can see that when we rotate it, it's uh, it's rotating and whatnot. We can see that that second uh, spline is not doing what it, it should at this point. So same thing, we can take the bottom two uh, controls or you know for the spline on the uh, spline IK control modifier. And we can parent them. I mean, I guess one way to do it is you could just parent them directly to the existing ones or to the same controls, however you think uh, is going to make the most sense to you. Um, so I think I'm going to maybe put these in a hierarchy. Let's actually just put them straight across. We could do either solution. It wouldn't matter uh, so much if we drop that one there. These should follow these at this point. And... So we're just going to take all these and just parent those into the system as well. So now when I take this and get rid of those brackets again, and you can see it's now twisting the whole system. So it's beginning to twist everything correctly. Um, and you can see it's starting to sort of flex around. Now you can see that the spine is bending in weird ways. And I'll just um, I'll just throw a, a key in here and for animation mode. And I'll just, so you can see this spline back here. Look at it bending and really weird. So this one's also doing it. It's putting this weird bend in. Well. I put this on um, uh, Bezier handles, and I wanted to show this, that really what you want to make sure is those center verts on the line. Now, if we go and grab that, smooth might be a better option for these center ones. So that's that one. And then let's grab, looks like I might do that. I've got so many things in there, it's hard to know what I'm grabbing. There we go, do that. And the center one uh, again, so into the verts, that center vert. And let's uh, set that one to smooth. Okay, and it'll smooth it out. Uh, should be, everything should stay put mostly where that is. And so let's go back and take a look at the result. Um, and now you're going to see it's going to be a little bit smoother again. So we want the top and bottom ones to be on Bezier's uh, so that we can kind of lock down the top and lock down the bottom a little bit better. But you're seeing now we're getting a nice smooth action happening, okay? And the the spine is is 
twisting nicely. It's twisting with it. But what's really nice now is you can control just how much of that you want to have happen. Let me just uh, uh, set this back. Um, and uh, so it's, oops, didn't want to freeze transform, transform to zero. Let's rotate this at the top and I'm going to turn animate back off again and now you can use these point helpers that are controlling the up nodes and if you slide these along to where you want you can see you can get them to rotate more or less um, and so you can kind of use these now as a simple way of fine-tuning uh, the control of the twist um, to where you might want it to be. So you can set them up and get them kind of in a, in a better solution uh, for what, whatever you're after. Now, if you're going for a total noodle character, it might be very even twist you want. If you're going for something uh, more realistic, obviously our, our upper uh, torso of our body doesn't twist as much because of the uh, rib cage and we tend to twist more in the waist area. So it's, it's whatever you need is what it boils down to. So this is producing a nice twisty solution uh, for the, uh, uh, the, the body. Now, remember I said we can weight these differently here, so we can play with those weights. Here's the problem. If I just grab this and start moving it, you can see I'm moving that center control. I probably don't want to do that. So what I want to do is disconnect um, the, uh, the, the, what's parented to it. So if we uh, pick that weighted one in the middle that's weighted between these two and uh, go page down, you can see it's, um, uh, you know, it's that center node for this control object that is weighted to it. So what we want to do is we want to unparent that. I'm just going to take the size of this up a little bit more so I can see it. There we go. So if we unparent this, because its parent node is, is that one. So I'm just going to go down to the children, and I'm just going to unlink that. I could, for instance, now take these and put them wherever I want. They don't have to go straight up and down like this, but I could spread them out more and then just go in and reparent this back in again. And I'm going to get a different twist off on this spine. So I've now got the ability kind of to fine tune a little of that. Um, you know, that how it reacts to it, uh, again, depending on how many joints are on there, but it's going to even uh, affect how it uh, bends side to side uh, when we're going side to side. So it's going to give that, uh, you know, sort of fine tuning capability to your rig. So that is effectively, I don't think I've missed anything major here. That's effectively a, a custom spline AK, IK solver. Now, if you want to learn how to make it non-stretchy, I have another video. Go take a look at that. It's how to control the stretch. In this particular situation, we would be using the second method from that video, not the first. If it was the first method, we would have a second um, uh, spline uh, up the uh, up the center here. Uh, and you'll see what, uh, how I, I deal with that in that video. And and so you can actually ramp on and off how much stretch you're getting in your um, in your spine setup. That's something else that really can't be done in any easy, easy fashion with the spline IK solver that already exists in Max. You don't have that extra layer of extraction um, and control over twist and your stretch factors. So for me, it's a, it's a non-usable tool for characters because inevitably um, animators want things in a very specific way. They want to have their characters deforming naturally, and I just don't have the ability to control it and, uh, and make sure things that don't flip, if it's a real noodly character, for instance. Whereas this one now, for the most part, you're, you've got a lot of twist available to you. But at some point, that second spline is going to start crashing through. You can see the second bone and the um, uh, fourth bone starting to flip over as it crashes through. But I'm able to twist it a long way before I start to lose control over it. And again, you could come up with other solutions and play around with things, and you can make it even twist further. But that's perfectly usable for 98%, may probably 99.9% .9 of all characters I've rigged in the last uh, near 30 years. Thanks for watching.